differences between individual learners cognitive factors now we will be looking at more closely at gardner and mcintyre's differentiation between cognitive and affective factors within individual uh, learners so one of the broad categories in which individual differences have been um, highlighted are the cognitive factors so what are these cognitive factors number 1 intelligence so if a child is superior in intelligence has ha- higher iq level and is doing better in academics then of course a part of that uh, will also be affect- reflected in the second language learning process right number 2 is language aptitude so do certain children uh, have a certain aptitude to learn a language or other languages is there something like a gift for learning a language so language aptitude is also seen as a factor in language learning um, facilitation now for measuring language learning aptitude gardner and mcintyre actually developed a aptitude test and it is seen as a very valid test of language aptitude and it is seen as predictive of success so there are certain skills that are there in the skills which are measured by this test uh, a phonetic coding so can the learners actually see the difference or somehow understand the differences between um the the sounds of the language grammatical sensitivity differences in grammatical use memory abilities and inductive language learning ability that is does the learner is the learner um, able to sort of deduce or um, certain rules from the language or how the language actually works or use certain rules to apply them to use the language or to make up or is able to make up their own rules in any case these are skills which are predictive of success of language learning and which comprise the test which has been designed by um, um, gardner and mcintyre the third thing which forms a part of the cognitive differences across learners is language learning strategy so the question is do successful learners set about the task of language learning second language learning differently from those who do not succeed then do they have at their disposal certain special ways of approaching second language learning now research has said that the students or the learners who succeed in second language learning learning do have different skills of or different strategies for learning the language so those strategies are different from the strategies used by those who do not succeed so much in the learning of the second language learn but the question is can these strategies which the successful learners are using if we can identify what are those strategies can these strategies then be taught to other students who are less successful in the learning of the language can we sort of enable the learners to also use the same successful strategies instead of the ones that they are using but there is also the question will these work so if the successful learners are able to or have been able to identify certain strategies that suit them so will the same strategies suit also other individuals who are individuals in their right and do not have the same um, uh, mental makeup do not have the same um, propensity to uh, for those things what i mean to say uh, over here is that when you come up with certain strategies individual strategies it is not necessary that what one 
what works for one individual would work also for the other individual because we are over here thinking of diversity. Then there is also the question that if are these uh, strategies that the successful learners uh, have, are they leading to learning or is the, their learning that they have already um, acquired has led them to use these strategies. So the relationship between the strategies and the learning is also not very clear. So the, we talked about the cognitive differences across learners. Number one was intelligence. Number two was aptitude. That is the propensity to learn a language. For this, we have a test also. And the third was the difference in strategies.